Hey everyone, it's great to see you. I don't know if all of you know this, but I work in an Avaya Network Operations Center, and I love being a part of this team because many of the ideas for my videos comes from the work that I do. I recently got the opportunity to collaborate with my buddy Charlie, and he was kind enough to take the time to bootstrap me on the process of setting up mobile push notifications in my Avaya Aura lab. And I wanted to share the process and learning experience with all of you. So to get started, let's take a look at the what and why of mobile push notifications. Here we have three devices. I have two phones over here that are registered to extension 1994. Let's go ahead and call those. Now we can see that both of those phones are ringing. They're both uh, doing SIP forking to extension 1994. Let me go ahead and end that call. And basically, what a push notification is going to do is it's going to allow that call to be pushed through the screen if the application itself has shut down or if the phone has become unregistered, which is probably going to happen quite a bit when the battery saving technology on an Apple device kicks in and throws the applications in the background, or if a user throws the application itself into the background manually. So if I double click on this and actually flip that up, that application is in the background. Let me do the same thing on this iPad. I'm gonna flip this up and I'm gonna throw it into the background. Now, this phone over here is manually registered. I manually entered in the session manager user details and the SIP domain and all of that into the phone. But the iPad actually used the iX Workplace automatic configuration through Avaya or device services. And that's needed because all of the settings that pertain to push notifications actually live there. But with this one and this one, now both of those applications have the iX Workplace thrown into the background. Let's see what happens when I call. Now you notice that the iPad is getting an alert and that's because the Apple push notification has basically woke the device up and said, hey, you need to do something. And we'll see a lot of that in the exercises and the setup that we do that explain that in a little more detail. But essentially, Apple push notification has woken up the device and the device has re-registered to session manager and accepted the call. Now you notice the device that's not using push notification services is not doing anything at all. And that's why you need push notifications to allow your device to wake up and receive those calls when the device is unregistered or if the device has thrown the application into the background. So let's go check out exactly how that's done. Now, at a thousand foot view, push notifications start when our device registers to Session Manager. The Avaya Workplace application not only registers to Session Manager, but it also includes a SIP notify, letting Session Manager know that it wants to activate push notifications for this extension. When we throw our application into the background of the iPhone and a call is received for that extension, the invite is sent to Session Manager. Then Session Manager sends a push notification to the Avaya push notification provider. The Avaya push notification provider then sends the request to Apple push notification and Apple push notification sends the push to Avaya workplace on your device. The device re-registers with session manager and the invite is sent to our Avaya workplace registered SIP extension 1994. So let's get started with setting up mobile push notification. The first thing we need to do is actually create an account on account.aviacloud.com, I'll list that below, to begin the process of registering our Avaya Session Manager with the Avaya Push Notification Provider and additionally set up and validate our domain. So I'm just going to use my Avaya SSO to log in. There we go. Before you get started, you'll need to have a domain. I set up a two-year domain on GoDaddy. I think it only cost me like $22 or so, and it's pretty painless to get signed up. Now back on our Avaya dashboard, up in the right corner of our dashboard, drop down this carrot and select add new company. So we're just going to fill out our name, a description, a quick message to get those of you who haven't subscribed to go ahead and smash that subscribe button, then choose save. After hitting save, you can see that we get a host of new options. One of these new options we need to focus on is setting up our domain. This would normally be the same domain found in the email handle used to sign into the workplace application. We'll go ahead and click on add domain. 
and I'll enter in the purchase domain name. Then select OK. Next, we'll need to select Verify, and we are presented with instructions of how we need to enter in our TXT entry into our DNS records. To do this, copy this verification code, then we'll navigate to GoDaddy, and we'll select the three dots here, and choose Manage DNS. In the right corner, we choose Add, then fill out the details as instructed choosing TXT as our record type, an at symbol for the name, paste in the string we copied for our value, and I'll choose one for time to live, and then select add record. And now we can see down here in our DNS records the TXT record that we entered a moment ago. All right, let's go back over to our push notification provider, and now we can hit verify to validate that we do in fact own this domain and with our TXT record populated we can see that the verification is successful. We do have some more items to address in our Avaya cloud push notification provider but before we can do that we need to set up some things in our system manager. So let's move over to our system manager and we'll navigate to elements, session manager, and global settings. Down in the right corner, select the option to enable mobile push notifications. And if you're having trouble with SIP devices that are also configured for EC500 running over each other, you can increase the EC500 notifications between 4 and 10 seconds. The default is 4 seconds. Then select Commit. Next, again using System Manager, we'll need to add the root certificate that was used to sign pnp.avaya.com's web server certificates to the session manager's WebSphere Trust Store. The Base64 encoded cert can be obtained from the following PSN. Let's go ahead and navigate to that now. And if we scroll down, we can copy the certificate from the begin to end certificate, and then navigate back to our system manager. We'll go to Services, Inventory, Manage Elements, then select our Session Manager. Drop down More Actions, and then choose Manage Trusted Certificates. To import our certificate, we select the Add option. Then select Import as PEM Certificate. Drop down and select the WebSphere Trust Store. Then we'll paste our root certificate into the box provided. Then we'll select Commit, and we can now see that we have a new Entrust Root CA certificate added to our Session Manager WebSphere Trust Store. In the background, I'll repeat this process for my secondary Session Manager. This is kind of the last step for setup on the Avaya System Manager, and it will be to set up our push notification provider settings. Let's navigate back to our Session Manager dashboard and choose Network Configuration. Then choose Push Notification, and lastly, Notification Provider. We'll be selecting New, and I'll begin filling in the details for my Avaya Push Notification Provider. Once you've filled in the four mandatory fields, choose Generate Keys, and we can see that we've been given a key to export. This is the authorization key in JSON format that we'll be importing into the Avaya Cloud Avaya Mobile Push Notification Service application. Let's actually do that now. Moving back over to my Avaya Cloud account, again under Manage Companies, this time I'll be choosing Apps, and I'm going to select Configure New App. I'll be selecting Avaya Mobile Push Notification Service from the dropdown. Then I'll paste in the JSON authorization key into the box provided. Select Save. Then choose Save again. And there we go, perfect. Now let's go back over to the System Manager. And I'll choose Verify Settings. And given that I've gotten a success message, I know that my Session Manager can connect and authenticate with the push notification provider. Since it was successful, I'll go ahead and commit my changes. Now underneath the notification provider that we just set up, select Notification Application. Now this application is typically predefined, 
the only thing we need to do here is choose the provider we created a moment ago. There we go. Now I'll choose commit. Next, I need to move over to my Avaya or device server. There is one setting needed by the Avaya Workplace client to ensure it's advertising and utilizing the push notification service, and we'll set that item up in our AADS, which is where our Avaya Workplace client retrieves its settings from. First, navigate to Dynamic Configuration, then select Group. I'll be typing in my Active Directory group. I place my users into the standard AADS user group though your groups may vary. So there we go, and then in the search tab, I'm going to look for the phrase push. And the setting we want to populate is telephony push notification enabled, and per the documentation, we want to set that to two, which is used for session manager push notifications. Now, make sure you choose the checkbox to include the setting in our settings file, and then when we're finished, we choose publish. In this pop-up, we select the checkbox for the group settings that will be applied to the group, and I tap in my AADS user group once again, then select Publish. And yes, I am sure. Before I set up my Avaya Workplace client, let's make sure the settings look good by entering in the URL used by the client when authenticating and rolling through the process of automatic configuration. To do this, we put in HTTPS, the IP address of our AADS server, then forward slash ACS, forward slash resources, forward slash configurations. You can see that we are prompted for a login, and I'll be using my Active Directory user account, tberry at labwarzone.com, then enter in the password for that account. And there we go. We are presented with all of those settings that would be presented to the Avaya Workplace application, including our new setting to enable push notifications. We have a session manager trace running here so we can see the SIP registration process of our Avaya Workplace client. So let's pull that up on the side and begin configuring our account. Choose configure my account and then type in the email address. Next, I'll type in the email address and password again used to authenticate to Active Directory, then choose Next. Our application is automatically configured for us, including our SIP extension and password. Skipping all of those warnings and tutorials, we can see that our device has successfully registered with the session manager. Back in at around the three minute mark of this video, I showed you that the Avaya Workplace extension registers with session manager then it sends a SIP notify message to set up and provide information about itself for the push notification service. One last thing to look at, I've taken the iPhone and slid the Avaya Workplace app into the background so we can see the push notification in action. Placing a call to extension 1994, we can see the invite is sent to session manager. And we then see a push notification sent to the Avaya push notification provider and a 200 OK is received back. At this point, it's in the hands of Apple to send the push to the device, and a ping keep alive from the device to the workplace extension tells us that the Apple push notification service has done this successfully. Session manager responds with a pong, the device registers, and session manager proceeds with sending the invite to extension 1994. This whole process took a little over a second to complete, which is pretty impressive when you think about the packet's destination and devices for which it had to process through. What's up, everyone? I've got a favor to ask you. Please help me get to a thousand subscribers. We're almost there. We're about halfway. And I want to thank everybody who has taken the time to subscribe to my channel. If you have an idea for a video, Linux, home lab setup, cat videos, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for learning with me today, and I'll see you all in the next video.